Come on, you're making this easy. Larry, what's up with that? <laughs> Fished him a thousand casts, that was five. <laughs> oh man. The Enrico fly. How about that, huh? <laughs> Okay. Kelly, there's a log down underneath the water. Oh, God, he liked that smoke. What's that? A little musky. He's got teeth. He's got teeth, Blair. Like swimming. Isn't he a beauty? Bank robbers, first fish. about the entitlement. Hmm? You need a bobber for any reason? Uh, oh, no, I need this fish. Ugh. Eat it. Come here. Mo better. Mo better. At the launch. Let him run. Showtime. You're a good end. You just ate a goat. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> you no <know>, steelhead. <laughs> Got an eight foot nine inch eight weight that we like a lot. Mm -hmm. On this edition of Fly Fish TV with Kelly Gallup, we join Larry Mann of the Hayward Fly Fishing Company to fish musky on two of northern Wisconsin's most famous rivers. We hit both the Chippewa and the Flambeau in our efforts to boat a respectable fish. It wouldn't be easy or quick, but Kelly and Larry would get the job done. He's in. You good? Good. Nice job. In our fly tying segment, Kelly heads to the fly shop to learn about Larry's knot for putting together a leader. As you'll discover, it's a beauty. A slim beauty. Hmm, it was much easier than I thought. Oh, that was a nice fish. Beauty. Oh, man. Woo. In our instructional segment, Joe Warren takes us out for some topwater popper action for smallmouth bass on a bay off of Washington's Columbia River. That's a good, probably close to three pounds, I'd say. All this coming right up on Fly Fish TV with Kelly Gallup. If you go to Hayward, Wisconsin and don't go to the National Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame, you've missed a big one. That is obvious as soon as you step onto the grounds. Big fish are everywhere, really big fish and inside the world's largest muskie and the exhibit halls are displays equally as impressive. I catch fish like this all the time. If you are intrigued with the tackle, flies, rods, reels, motors, and anglers that are the foundation of freshwater fishing in this country, you can easily spend a day here. Kelly's northwestern Wisconsin angling adventure begins here on the Chippewa, a shallow tannic river of legend to musky aficionados. What do you got for me, Larry? Got a perch pattern here from Enrico Puglisi. Yeah. Light, <laughs> easy to cast, looks good in the water. These things jettison their water. When you back cast, the water just flies off of this. They're super light. They're really not as heavy as a lot of the flies I fish for trout. So it swims and undulates in the water. This thing's going to just wiggle all over the place. And I'm sure we'll see that it, it has a positive effect on the fish. If we're using great big flies that are wind resistant and uh, hard to cast, hard to retrieve, you're going to hit the wall at some mm -hmm. point. And it may be that cast that you hit the wall on that is the fish. And so more good casts all day long. A pretty moderate retrieve on that, Kelly. Okay. You want it to, like that? Mm-hmm. Perfect. There's the Enrico Splash, my first shower of the day. <laughs> I can't wait. 
Kelly was giddy over the prospect of fishing such a famed piece of water and had Larry shove yeah, off before all hands were on deck and ready to serve. That didn't take all day, Larry. Come on, you're making this easy. Enrico. Larry, what's up with that? <laughs> Fished him a thousand casts, that was five. <laughs> oh man. I got your net. Nice. Good start. The Enrico fly. How about that? Huh? <laughs> if you look, you see where that's shallow at the bank? Yep. And it drops in right there. Yep. And kind of eddies up in here. Not terribly deep, but it's the right water type. It's, you know, it's exactly the same stuff we do for big trout. Yep. It's exactly where they are, which should be easy for me, but I'm still gonna ask you on every single spot. I like how that worked. <laughs> where do I throw, Larry? Right there. Oh, there's one. Oh, Ralph, it's a bite. Historically, you'd hear this stuff that the big fish were in the lakes, not in the rivers. And you told me that the world record came out of the river, right? Well, it's the, it came out of the Chippewa flowage, which is the result of damming up the East Fork and the West Fork. So okay. that fish undoubtedly grew up in a riverine environment. So it was technically a lake, but it's... It was a still river. Still river. Out of that wood pile. Oh, there he is. Oh, that's a tugger. I think it's a smallie. It's a big one if it is. Bank robbers, first fish. Something just rolled out down below there that was pretty substantial. That smallie was right where I thought a muskie was going to be. They're pretty much holding the same water. They're holding identical water. That's uh, they any cast you have to be prepared for either fish. What's your seasons here for fishing? Uh, the musky season opens the last Saturday in May and runs through November 30th. And we'll fish sad. it from start to finish. Is there a peak? Uh... Typically, right after they spawn, right after the season opens, mm -hmm. it's a better numbers time. You'll catch more of them. And in the fall, late fall, they put on the feed bag because they need to create eggs over the winter. Oh, little guy, did you see him? Yep, I did. <laughs> there he is. Down there in the shadows. That was a smaller one, yeah, that's two different fish. You see that one? I did. First one was about 20 inches, maybe. Yep. 22, the other one wasn't quite that big. Every float trip has its omens, and this would be no exception. The oddest looking eagle eyed our intrepid anglers as they fished on by. Hear that bridge coming up there, Larry? I'd say that I got too lucky too early. Uh, I'd have to agree. <laughs> I mean, you know, ratio -wise. Going out and seeing a muskie, you know, having it eat your fly, catching one is always a good day. Oh, you got a I was picking up and throwing up. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Gotta be kidding me. Oh, he's gonna just reel up. There he was. <laughs> That's not really that funny. After much crying in his beer about the big one that oh. should have been, Kelly joined Larry for a second day of muskie hunting, this time on the equally famous trophy river, the Flambeau. Okay. Kelly, there's a log down underneath the water. Oh, yeah, I do like that small one. What's that? Little muskie. He's got teeth. He's got teeth, Blair. Like swimming. Isn't he a beauty? Come here. 
Hey, 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 hey. Look how beautiful that color is, though. Yeah. It's shiny. Look that green in that thing. You got to take a ride. On this trip, it couldn't intense. last forever. The sunny skies, that is. You need a bobber for any reason? Hmm? Do you need a bobber for any reason? Uh, oh, no, I need this fish. Oh, eat it, buddy. How do you like that? How about that right at the landing? Oh. How about that, Larry? You gotta like 100 that. 100 yards. Come here. Mo better. Mo better. At the launch. Uh oh. Oh, his head's out of the net. Yeah, got that. Hold on. There we go. He's out. Look at that, Larry. 100 yards. What was that bobber for? Day. Hey, cutie. He's in. You good? Yes. Nice job. He just been hitting all the good spots, and that's where he ate it. Yeah. Right out in the middle. Wouldn't you know it? Fish long enough, and the worm will turn. No comprende, Lair. Keep casting. They're muskies, <laughs> right? They make their own rules, all that stuff. Just ahead on Fly Fish TV with Kelly Gallup, we head back to Larry's shop to see how to tie up the knot. That is the Slim Beauty. And pull on the two standing ends, not on the doubled end. Pull it down tight, and there you have a Slim Beauty. Nice. Larry Mann and his wife, Wendy Williamson, pioneered fly fishing muskie in northern Wisconsin. Their shop, the Hayward Fly Fishing Company, is muskie central for anglers who want the challenge of landing one on a fly. How does it, how's your whole leader system work out? What, what's it? Well, the leader system that I use, I, I need to, to have a, a strong enough leader to turn over the flies mm -hmm. and deliver them where we want them to go. If we were, if we were using a, a sink tip or a sinking line, I would do a, a straight 50 pound right. fluorocarbon, three or four feet of that, and that would be the, yeah, the leader, done. This is a, a little more complicated, but it's still pretty simple. It's three feet of Maxima Chameleon, 40 pound test, two feet of 30 pound, a foot or so of 20 pound, and then a 50 pound test fluorocarbon bite guard. Yeah, that's the one that I'd, I'd never seen. I saw you tie it, I thought it was gonna be really complicated, but you did it so fast, so. I'm gonna have you slow it down here. <laughs> I can do that. We're gonna do it slower, but that was, I mean, that's the unique thing. I... Starts with a double overhand knot in the fluorocarbon, and that double overhand is pulled down to a figure eight. That's where I got lost yesterday. So we have a figure so eight. You, didn't, you don't really tighten it down, you leave the two loops, right, little bow tie there, okay. Yep, then I'll take the about a foot, double over the 20 pound test and double it, about a foot of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna thread the 20 pound. That's where I got lost yesterday. I couldn't figure out how you got that. I thought you laid them together. All right. Pull it through and then I'm gonna tighten Yep. the figure eight. Yep. So that's my starting point and from here uh, this will look familiar to you as almost like a clinch knot. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold the, the uh, we've got to make an opening here so I'm going to hold it open and go around one, mm -hmm. two, three, four times away from my right hand mm -hmm. and I'll turn it back on itself and go one, two, three times back and the looped end goes through here. Basically a clinch knot. Basically yeah. a, a clinch knot. I'm going to yeah. take the two standing ends, lubricate that.
Yep. The Slim Beauty. Hmm. It was much easier than I thought. So let's clip that. I think this is one of the big mysteries of, you know, pike and musky and, you know, everybody thinks you got to have this super complicated, heavy, thing's clean as a whistle. I'm glad you spit on that. I don't talk to you <laughs> Oh, there he was. He's down in the weeds now. Ah. <laughs> this is a nice fish. Coming up on Fly Fish TV with Kelly Gallup, Joel Warren shows us his top water tactics for smallmouth oh. on the Columbia River. Nice fish. A lot of fun. I just like to vary the retrieve. Let it land, let it let the uh, rings around the popper clear and then and then pop it a couple times and then uh, let it sit and then sometimes just a small uh, a, kind of a drag it like just a slow pull where it V wakes so I, I like to pop it I like to instill the V wakes in it so it, I, I like to alter it I'm trying to imitate a, like a wounded uh, uh, fish on the surface or a large insect, something that just causes some surface disturbance. It looks like it's still trying to fight for its last few minutes of life and hoping that the bass will uh, just come up and devour it. I like to use the rod tip to employ action in the pop as well. Oh, that was a nice fish. Beauty. Oh, man. Woo. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Whammo. What an aggressive take. Get him on the reel. back off here a little bit so don't in case there's any more fish. I like to let it let it let it calm down and then and uh, just keep it going, you know. Oh wow. That's good, probably close to three pounds, I'd say. Boy, barely hooked in the upper lip there. So, didn't have too much in them, but I got them. Oh, it's hooked better than I thought. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Man, smallmouth on the surface early in the morning. They're in here, there's a lot of uh, smolts uh, working the top and, and they're chasing them. Give it a chance to revive. So you're, 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 you're the, uh, the puppeteer, so to speak. You know, you're creating the movement in that fly to imitate something up there that the bass is going to want to eat. It could be a territorial response. It could be out of hunger, but whatever it is, uh, you know, you want that bass to come up and devour that, that popper. <laughs> right near the boat. I was getting ready to set the rod down to make my next move. And the smallie came up and whammo, he's on. That's it for this edition of Fly Fish TV with Kelly Gallup. We hope you enjoyed the show and that you remember our sponsors and guests right. who made it possible. A special thanks to Larry Mann and camera boatsman Brett Nelson for making our musky adventure in northwestern Wisconsin so memorable. Also thanks to Joe Warren for getting us out early to demonstrate his top water tactics for smallmouth bass. And as usual, thanks to Kelly Gallup for sharing his fishing knowledge and friends so that we all can be better anglers.